Good morning, everybody. I am your moderator. My name is Güzel Yücel from the Institute of Marine Science and Technology at the Dokuz Eylül University. Welcome to the Marine Conservation in the Mediterranean Trends and Perspective Seminar. Thank you for joining us. The seminar will last approximately 30 minutes, following which there will be a 10 minutes question and answer uh, section where, where you can write in your questions in English uh, in the chat box. Uh, so it gives me great pleasure to introduce our speaker for the day, a colleague, a co-author, a committed aquaculture and environment scientist, the former director of IUCN Global Marine and Polar Program, chair of the IUCN Ecosystem Based Aquaculture Group, consultant for IUCN Center Mediterranean Cooperation. My dear Monsieur Francois Simard, please take the floor, please. Thank you so much, Guzel. It's a great pleasure to be, uh, to be here and uh, thank you so much for inviting me for this seminar. Uh, very pleased to, uh, to, uh, to be with you. Um, so, um, I would like first to introduce um, a bit myself and IUCN, and then we uh, will go into the, uh, the uh, seminar itself about marine protected areas and um, aquaculture, and also we'll look at a bit uh, marine spatial planning um, for a, a journey uh, um, through um, the um, uh, marine conservation issues in the Mediterranean. So as uh, Guzel told you, um, I'm now uh, working as a consultant for the IUCN Center for Mediterranean Cooperation and also for the groups of IUCN, but I was formerly the uh, director of the Global Marine and Polar Program during the, some years. And um, I have been also before that coordinator for the marine program uh, for the Mediterranean of IUCN. So, I've been quite traveling in the Mediterranean. It's a place what, what I, I love, and uh, and I'm, I'm very pleased to be with uh, Mediterranean colleagues, and maybe some from the Galaxy, by the way. <laughs> um, so uh, uh, I'll try to share my screen. Uh, is that uh, I hope it, it will work. Uh, let me. It should. Tell me, tell me if it works. Not yet, uh, but it start. Yes. yes, yes, yes. Okay, excellent. And uh, I go to the next slide if I can. <laughs> but ah, yes, here it is for me. Maybe, maybe you you see that. So first, I would like to introduce what is the IUCN, the International Union for Conservation of Nature. Uh, it's a big organization located, I mean, headquarters are in Switzerland, near Geneva. It was created in 1948 um, by UNESCO, but it's not a UN organization. Uh, it has um, more than uh, 1,500 members, organizations, and states. This is the uh, specificity of IUCN. There, there, there are state members, about uh, 80 state members, uh, so, but it's not a UN. Uh, and, and the other members are either um, NGOs. Um, most of the uh, NGOs are members of IUCN, such as the WWF, uh, Conservation International, and also a lot of smaller uh, lo local or national NGOs are members of IUCN. Uh, research labs or university can also be members of IUCN. And uh, recently, it was um, uh, decided at the last Congress of IUCN in September in Marseille this year, uh, all local, local authorities, local communities can also be members of IUCN. Uh, so, for example, a city such as Izmir could be a uh, member of IUCN. It's, uh, it's new because it could not be the case before. Uh, it was only the state who could be a member. Now all the cities, uh, localities, or, or, or regional council, or county, or 
I mean, could be, can be members of IOCN, which is very important for us because it, me, it means that the action of IOCN can also be at uh, other levels than the national level. Uh, IOCN has um, more than 1,000 staff all over the world in, uh, in 60 offices. Um, but what is very important in IOCN, it's uh, um, the commission member, but I will come back to that. Uh, IOCN has a status of official observer as a UNGA. It means that it is um, the uh, first uh, environmental organization that can take the floor at all the UNGA uh, uh, assemblies. Uh, the <coughs> the um, um, vision of IOCN is a just world that values and conserves nature. And uh, its um, mission is to influence, encourage, and assist societies throughout the world to conserve the integrity of the diverse biodiversity of nature and to ensure that any use of natural resources is equitable and ecologically sustainable. Um, it works as this, this, this scheme shows, the members, the secretariat has said um, more than 1,000 staff, the commissioner will back, come back to that, and many experts and partners. IOCN is a very uh, inclusive organization. We work with everyone. I mean, also with the private sector, uh, even if sometimes it's conflictive, uh, but we really work, want to work with all people that are involved or concerned by uh, the nature conservation. Uh, this is the commissions. Uh, it's important because all the knowledge is there. Uh, the Secretariat is, uh, applies, a pro implements a program, and members are, of course, uh, uh, important because they meet in the Congress and they decide everything. But the work, the work is done mainly, or many, or, or a lot of work is done by the Commission. For example, the Commission uh, on Eco uh, Species, Species Survival. Sorry, this slide is in French, but just to change a bit, uh, not only in, in English. <laughs> uh, so the, the Commission on Species Survival is the one in charge of the uh, red list. Probably you all know what the red list is, is a list of endangered species. Um, the Commission on, on Protected Area, WCPA, is, is, is working on all, all things related to, uh, to, uh, to protected areas and marine protected areas, of course. And uh, my, my um, presentation is based a lot on, on WCPA um, publications. And there is also a Commission on Vision and environmental Law, a Commission on Education and Communication, a Commission on uh, uh, Socioeconomic and Environmental Aspects, and a Commission on Ecosystem Management. And here we have this small group that I'm, I'm chairing, which is the ecosystem based aquaculture group. In each commission, there are a lot of expert groups like this, a thematic group or, or specialized on, on one uh, specific aspect. And uh, this is uh, the way it's working. And it has more than 10,000 10, or 12, 15,000 experts that are uh, gathered in those uh, commissions. And there is a last, uh, last one commission, the Climate and Cruises Commission that was created indeed in September in Marseille. So it's a very new, brand new commission just to take care of the uh, climate change issue and to take care of the highest level of IOCN. Of course, we had in the past a program on climate change, we had advisors on climate change, but now we have also a commission, uh, commissions that will uh, gather all the experts in the world that are concerned with the climate change in relation with the biodiversity. So this is uh, very uh, quickly, uh, an excellent presentation. And after, after the, my presentation, of course, I'm happy to answer your question about IOCN also. So the, uh, this is the, the, my presentation. We first go to the uh, marine protected areas definitions. Uh, we'll go to the categories in detail because categories are extremely important. And uh, we'll go there after on the other effective area-based conservation measures, the OECM. I will explain what it is. It's quite an important uh, trend at the moment. And then after that, we we'll go to MP and aquaculture as an example of the relationship between MPA and the sectors. And we'll finish by something about marine spatial planning. If I'm too long, we will just you, you shake your hand or something and you tell me to stop. <laughs> um, so the definition of uh, protect, marine protected areas, this is the uh, official, let's say, definition that is accepted uh, by, by all, um, even by the CBD. Uh, also, it, it is uh, from IUCN. A protected area is a clearly defined geographical space recognized, dedicated, and managed through legal or other effective means to achieve the long-term conservation of nature with associated ecosystem services and cultural value. So it's very inclusive. Uh, it talks about, of course, nature conservation, but also protecting 
uh, the uh, local communities and, 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 uh, and, and traditions. Uh, this is very important in the Mediterranean because we don't have those large and, and virgin spaces, uh, uh, even in the sea, that can be protected without taking care of uh, the people that are living there. Uh, in the Mediterranean, we have also always people living everywhere and using all the resources. So we have to really take care of uh, conserving not only the nature, but also the way the nature is, is used. So it's about sustainable use and conservation all the time. Um, yeah, protected areas, it's uh, uh, in, in, in the reality, it's called many, many different names. And uh, there are more than 350 designation types in the world. And sometimes it's quite complicated to understand what it is. Uh, so the, uh, the WCP, I use in the WCP, have some guidelines uh, to, to really explain what is a protected area and what is not a protected area. And here also we'll talk about the other uh, area-based conservation measures. Uh, so it's it's clear, it's, it has to be clear that some, some measures are protected areas and others are not. And we'll see that in detail. Uh, about the categories, uh, there, is, uh, there are seven categories of protected areas. Uh, from the strict nature reserves, which is the one and the wilderness area, 1B and 1A, which is quite uh, strongly protection, strong protection, and uh, where basically uh, we cannot enter, we cannot do anything. So, so those, those are some very strict nature reserve. And then you have a number of other um, uh, categories uh, according to the, uh, the management of them. Um, so the, the two is a national park, which is a very um, uh, known and everybody know what is a national park is managed mainly for ecosystem protection and recreation. It means, of course, that people can get in, cannot maybe use too much the resource, even sustainably, but in some cases it is possible. Natural monument number three is managed mainly for conservation of specific natural and cultural features. So again, we have natural and cultural feature, which means that we also uh, are looking at conserving uh, the tradition there. Uh, four, uh, manage mainly for conservation through management intervention. So this is very important uh, because it's all the restoration cases. When you have, uh, I don't know, a, a coastal area or um, a marsh or a, a wetland that is having some threats, uh, you can protect it for restoration and with management intervention. Uh, to keep the, the nature working. Five is managed mainly for landscape, seascape conservation and recreation. And uh, this is important um, because, uh, five, and six, I mean, it's managed mainly for sustainable use of natural ecosystem. And those two are very are really the one that are most important for the Mediterranean uh, region because again, people are living there. So we are, those five and six are the largest places, largest areas, which are, protected, um, uh, as a, of course, at the long term, but by keeping um, local communities living there and using the, the resources. Um, what else, the, the categories are valid for uh, protected areas uh, as a terrestrial or marine. In the marine, we have some specific issues to, 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 uh, to fix or to consider. Uh, the first is the, the fluid environment. Of course, marine is what is, is uh, having current and it's moving a lot and you cannot uh, decide that that place is to concern uh, without looking at what is uh, around. Of course in pressure also but more in marine because the water masses are moving a lot and are bringing a lot of things. Uh, so the scale uh, of connectivity is important to look in marine. Marine, marine area and MPA will receive a lot of things from road much more than the terrestrial one so we have to look at the size of the MPA in, in, in taking care of what is around. Um, uh, the, the tenure or the ownership of the sea, of course, is different. In, in, in the, in the, in the, on land, you, you know who is the owner. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a, clearly it's a private or it's public, but it, you know who is the, the owner. In marine, it's not always the, the case because the, the, it's the commons, it's a, it's a public, public but uh, so it's, it's important to define exactly who are the rights. Uh, not ownership, maybe because uh, it's most of the case it's the public, as the state you know, we own the sea. But the, the rights are, are diverse, and this is important to define who has the right on, on an area. And uh, the boundaries uh, of a marine protected area is difficult to set up. You cannot have uh, fences or whatever; it's just uh, some line on the map. 
and you can have some boy in some cases, but it's not that easy to um, to 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 look at as it is in tertiary. So you have to take care of this too. Um, and then um, the uh, the um, the extractive activities and marine, especially in the Mediterranean, you have fisheries, you have navigation, you have uh, uh, aquaculture if, uh, and tourism, uh, leisure activity everywhere. So you have really to um, to look at precisely what activities can be compatible with your MPA and, and where. This is quite an important point, and we will come back to that also very quickly. Um, so the, the categories uh, are, are applied. Um, uh, looking at the primary objective in conservation, what do you want to achieve there? You have the, your, your, your um, management plan, you have uh, really what you want to do, and then you, you, you have the category which is coming to, to that. And, and this is important also for developing your, the, the, the management. Uh, of course, uh, all categories are good, but not all may apply to your MP or the MP you want to, to manage. Um, uh, and Again, uh, not all areas that are achieving marine conservation will be MPA. To be an MPA, you have to, 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 to answer some very clear questions. Um, and there is no categories better than, than, than the other. Of course, many people say that the first D1 and, and one A, one B are stronger because they are reserves and you can enter. But in, at the end of the day, in terms of, of uh, results of efficiency, uh, maybe sometime you have a bigger area with people living there that are achieving um, a good uh, nature conservation. Um, so uh, what are the, 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 the uh, marine areas that are not uh, MPAs? This is important to look at, uh, especially in the Mediterranean. So for example, fisheries management areas. Uh, there is a lot of fisheries reserve, but uh, they are not considered as MPA because they don't look at other activities than fisheries. And even it's uh, well managed for fisheries and, and, and biology might be very well conserved. Some other activities can do whatever they want in the area. So for this, for this uh, reason, it's not um, considered as an MPA. Um, likewise, the communities areas managed for sustainable extraction of marine products like coral, fish or shells are not considered as MPAs. Uh, this is maybe more valid in some developing countries. Um, the, um, Coastal management uh, that are set up for tourism, for example, uh, uh, even uh, for conservation interests are, are not MPAs because they are set up for tourism uh, primarily. So, so their, their primary goal is not uh, marine conservation. Same thing for the wind farm and oil platforms. This is very important for uh, the current development. Uh, even they, they uh, exclude uh, other activities and they can have really uh, good uh, uh, results in, 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 in biology conservation, they are not really MP because they, they, again, their objective is not marine conservation, even they do that. Um, same thing for other kind of, uh, of um, areas such as military training areas or, or pipeline exclusion zone, shipping lanes, they are all uh, excluding activities, uh, but they're not part of marine protected areas. And uh, last, the very large area where certain species are protected by law across the entire region cannot be considered as an MPA either because they don't look at all the ecosystem, but only on one, one species or a, a gender or a family. Um, the WCPA um, uh, gives advice on a, on a range of issues uh, regarding uh, the MPA. Uh, for example, uh, on the left-hand side, this table shows that uh, who is really providing the management is that as a government itself is a local community so uh, you have to look at that, that grid and according to your category and on the right hand side very interestingly uh, this is um, uh, uh, is how, how to look at um, the depths because of course in marine you don't have only coastal uh, coastal you have also high, high open sea let's say open sea uh, mpa and uh, might be very deep and uh, so the the, the protection that you have to give to the surface area and to the bottom cannot can be different. So sometimes you have to. It's not really recommended because it makes it very complicated. But you have, you can have different categories for the surface of the water and the bottom. The bottom can be uh, an, uh, a reserve where you are fishing or anything is forbidden due to the 
uh, by the fissure there, and the uh, the upper layer of the of the sea could be open to some uh, local fisheries, for example. Uh, and then here you have the uh, relationship between uh, the categories and all the, the activities, which is quite um, uh, an important table. Uh, I don't want to go into too much detail there, but you can see that in some in, in all categories, some some uh, some activities can be permitted. In green, what is permitted; in red, what is not permitted; and in yellow, depends. Uh, but in any case, uh, for example, research and traditional use can be permitted in all the categories. We don't want, of course, to exclude the research taking place, but it has to be non-extractive. And we don't want to exclude people that are living in those areas, traditionally. And uh, for example, uh, uh, at the contrary, at the, at the bottom of the table, you have that so, some, some uh, um, activities that can, cannot be uh, in any category or, or, or like habitation, I mean, cities or village can be in five because five is really about landscape and if you have a, a traditional village there you can have it but otherwise it's not a place to to live uh, uh, well excluding of course uh, local communities that are traditionally living in those places um, here in we, you have the table only for fisheries so, uh, so likewise you have in red what is really not possible in, in the EMPA and what is possible long long term and sustainable local fishing practices uh, and to collection tool for research but uh, we consider that uh, in, let's say industrial or large size uh, fishing is not uh, possible in any um, MPA. Um, uh, the, the uh, industrial fisheries is really too, too much destructive, but other kind of fisheries uh, are, are possible. Um, and here, uh, uh, I, I, I take in, into the, the core of my, my talk, we have the same table for, uh, for aquaculture. Aquaculture, as you know, is, uh, is very diverse and uh, you have uh, really different things. So um, restoration purpose aquaculture can be set up in, in many, in most of the category, maybe not the one because the one is a reserve. Uh, uh, and uh, at the end of the table, you have high density fish catch culture can, cannot really be in uh, MPAs, but in some case, uh, in five and six, it is something that you can look at. It's in yellow because it's not no, it's not a yes either. But uh, for example, uh, in five and six, it's um, always possible to have low density shellfish culture for the mussels or oysters or um, even even high density um, such shellfish culture um, other uh, other kind of, of uh, extensive let's say aquaculture um, here we come to the uh, actually target 11 uh, from the um, set up in, in, in 2010 but which is still valid and will be post 2020 will be still valid. Um, it says, um, I don't want to read all of it, but it says it's the famous 10%, uh, you know. But uh, at the end of this text, you have an other area-based conservation measures. And this is a very important one because at that time in 2010, uh, they said, well, uh, only by, by MPAs or by PAs, we won't reach the 10%, so we have to take into consideration other kind of measures. And they said, okay, it, it has to be, it has to be protected by protected areas, but also by other uh, area-based conservation measures. And now uh, what are those uh, other that are not uh, protected areas? And um, this is the working definition of our OECM, which is uh, quite accepted at the moment, although it's still, uh, a bit in discussion, but it is uh, valid. Uh, clearly defined geographical space beyond the protected area network, governed and managed in ways that deliver the long-term and effective conservation of nature and associated ecosystem services and cultural values, regardless of its current dedication. And this is quite important for the Mediterranean. So it says that the destination, the conservation outcome is the same as a protected area, but the origin and journey may be very different. Uh, so uh, back to my previous slide, um, for, for, for example, for uh, a military zone or for um, a, a wind farm, um, uh, the, the, um, the dedication is not uh, marine conservation, but the outcome might be very good. And so we have to recognize that, that many areas that are not dedicated to nature conservation, but are managed 
and are delivering nature conservation are to be considered by all as a, a good uh, um, tool. And, and this is quite important for, for um, uh, the Mediterranean. Uh, and if we look at fisheries reserve, or if we look at aquaculture areas, we can consider, can look at, are they really having some uh, uh, conservation values? And if yes, we have to recognize that and also to promote it, to make sure that it is um, and on the long term and it is when we can conserve uh, those uh, and protect those areas for also their conservation value. Um, well, I don't want to go, to go too much into detail because we don't have uh, a lot of time and, uh, and it's already uh, probably, uh, yes, 9.30. So, uh, um, but su such, it, it's the same thing as, an, as a, an MPA at the end of the day. Uh, the, the location has to be very well defined. It has to be governed and managed. It has to be effective uh, long-term conservation. And it, have, it has to be recognized for the conservation value, exactly what I, I just said before. And then you can uh, have an, uh, an OECM. And OECM will help a lot of the states to reach the 10% or the 30%, because a new target is 30% of protected areas and OECM by 2030. Those are the uh, Convention on Biological Diversity targets and the uh, global targets. Uh, okay, let's go into aquaculture, a bit more into aquaculture and, um, and marine protected area, which is a very interesting topic that I'm looking at for now many years and with Guzel also. We had a lot of uh, meetings in uh, already 15 years we are working on all those issues. Um, so uh, the idea is uh, analyzing relation between aquaculture and MPAs from the perspective of coexistence and integration. Here, we, 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 our perspective is not to look at the uh, bad impact of aquaculture on the natural conservation, on nature or on biodiversity. It's more to look at what is good there. Uh, what are the good perspective for integration and coexistence? Um, and we consider, of course, all type of aquaculture, fish cage, bivalve, seaweed, multi-traffic, whatever. And, uh, and all their relationship with the environment and all the relationship with diverse MPA types and categories, not only with the uh, category six. So it's really looking at having a, 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 an open mind and an open view on all the relation between aquaculture and, uh, and uh, MPA and understanding which aquaculture type can be developed in synergy with uh, the MPA. And where are the opportunities between aquaculture and MPA? We all know that Aquaculture needs good water. Without good water, you cannot have a good aquaculture, good production. So you need the nature. It's a, it's, a, it's a basic ecosystem service from the nature to give aquaculture good water quality. And aquaculture is expanding. At the same time, MPA is expanding because if we want to reach the 30% target, we have to set up uh, uh, MPAs and OECMs in many places. So the idea of synergies and opportunities is key if you want to reach those targets. Targets will be is 30% of MPA and uh, uh, developing aquaculture for food security. Uh, so um, here we come as considering aquaculture site as potential OECMs. And this is a very, very new idea. Um, a, a, a workshop in, in, in the spring uh, organized also by ISN and by the ISIS, the International Council for Exploration of the Sea, looked at uh, various cases of fisheries uh, reserve as OECM. And in those uh, example, one of them was an aquaculture site in, in England, Lime Bay. And they considered that it's a very good OECM because it, it, uh, it's a mussel culture. Uh, and this site is really protected for uh, other activities because the mussel culture is there and you cannot do anything else. And by protecting the mussel culture, you also protect, the site is also protecting the biodiversity. So uh, in the future, next future, we will really look at cons considering aquaculture site as other uh, effective conservation measures. And this is quite an important point. Um, so uh, it's conduct also us to uh, have, uh, 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 have a broader reflection on the role of MPA in the society. Um, what is the uh, re relation with the blue economy? 
uh, why MPA is there and, uh, and uh, supporting uh, the ecosystem services and why it is so important for uh, the economical development and for the blue economy. Um, so we published uh, uh, already some, uh, some articles and some, uh, some guidelines. You can find that on, on internet, I guess, very easily. And the first was aquaculture and marine protected areas, uh, synergies and opportunities. And here we look at different possible, possible um, uh, way of, of co cooperation between aquaculture and, uh, and MPA. Um, so um, the, the main question we have is, uh, should we exclude some type of aquaculture and why? Uh, should we define a frame, what kind of approach? And we are looking at all, all those kind of things, you know? Um, and and, and a very with a, and a very open open minded. So we conduct some uh, some uh, case studies. The first one is was in Zanzibar in East Africa, um, and uh, uh, we had here two two questions, two main questions: How and why aquaculture is marine in marine protected areas is an attractive and sustainable alternative for coastal community, and how can aquaculture in coastal areas be a nature based solution? In support of, of socio-ecological resilience and climate change adaptation. So you, you see, it's not only looking at aquaculture or looking at protected areas, looking at how this develop together and what are the, the uh, opportunities. Um, so could aquaculture within an NPA contribute to a better social acceptability of aquaculture? This is also a key point. And for that, we had another case, which is uh, closer um, to Turkey than, than the Zanzibar one. We looked at the um, in Tunisia, uh, the aquaculture of uh, Sibrim uh, in, in, in Cage in the Bay of Monastir. And uh, so we did that with the um, local um, association, local NGOs, and also with the GFCM, General Fisheries Commission for the Mediterranean. And uh, well, it's only some kind of picture to look at uh, what, what, what is the, this site. This site is a very important protected area. Uh, around the Kuriat Islands, a couple of islands that are uh, high, high, uh, high biodiversity for Posidonia bed, for turtle nesting there, uh, and and so it's it's a it's a very important area in the south of Mediterranean for turtles and for Posidonia and all the ecosystems. But at the same time, it's a bay, and it, it, it there, there is a good development of of uh, aquaculture for now some years, and um, and the the idea was to look at how um, this Korea Thailand MPA and the fish culture are working together, well or not well. And uh, uh, as, a, as a result of this case study, we published uh, um, a, a leaflet of 12 pages, and you can have also access to this in, in internet. Uh, so we look at all the, um, the relation between the cages and the local biodiversity. You can see a picture with dolphins uh, around the cages. Uh, it means also that um, the cages are far to hurt the dolphin, but uh, dolphins are attracted also by the fish because there are some food for them. Um, uh, so, so this is not a specifically a positive impact, but it's something that we have to look at. Um, we uh, can look at also their interaction between the and the turtles to make sure that there is no uh, problems because turtles are very uh, fragile and animals regarding also uh, pollution and, and things like that. Um, and you have also some tourism in the bay that can look at both the MPA and the aquaculture. So aquaculture can be, in this case, for the tourist uh, a visit. You can imagine a visit for tourists going to the Kerala Island to see the the um, the um, seascape in the, and the and the, the islands, the nature, and also the tourists can go to the aquaculture farm to look at fish production. And all this uh, is, is, is leading to a kind of a marine spatial planning in the bay where the farms are located in places where they get good water quality, but also they don't have bad impact on the Posidonia beds, for example, because Posidonia and Posidonia are very sensitive to the organic matter that, can, that flows from, from the cages. Um, so here we, we really have um, this case study with a SWOT analysis. Uh, uh, strengths, weakness, opportunity, and, and threats uh, to look at, uh, at, at uh, all, all the, 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 good, the, the synergies and opportunities between aquaculture and this MPA. We conducted also uh, two others uh, after Zanzibar, one in Polynesia about a giant clam, and one in Indonesia about shrimp culture in mangrove. And we are looking at now uh, having other case studies uh, all over the world, and specifically 
in the Mediterranean. We are looking at one case study in Morocco, and we would really like to have one case study in Turkey, maybe or maybe in the Black Sea. I'm, I'm not sure, but we have. I'm, I'm we'll be very happy to work with with you uh, on identifying a place where we have um, a, a, a good uh, MPA, a strong MPA, and also a strong aquaculture going on, and to look to look at all the synergies and opportunities between aquaculture and, and MPA in one Turkish site. Uh, but this is well, we'll discuss later with, with you and with Guzul. Um, so I'm, marine, I'm getting to the end of my presentation with marine spatial planning. Uh, this is uh, a very important tool. Uh, that is not new, but uh, it's difficult to put in place. Um, it's a public process for analyzing and allocating the special and temporal distribution of human activity in marine areas. Uh, it's a strong tool. It has to be used um, uh, with a very, very strong uh, participatory approach. Of course, it's, it's ecosystem based, it's integrated, adaptive, it's very strategic. It's not an end, it's, uh, it's just a tool to make sure that we use the marine space uh, correctly. Um, it's, it's really uh, balancing development and, and conservation in a uh, um, bright, uh, smart way. Um, so um, the marine spatial planning is not a substitute for single sector planning. It's not uh, a one-time plan. It's something that you have to, to put again and again. Um, it's not a, a, as a conservation planning. Uh, it's not an ocean zoning. It's much more than this. It's really based on um, the participation of all, and it is something that is evolving. And it's uh, this is a result of it. It's uh, an example in the in, in the U.S. in the Gulf of Maine. But uh, uh, at the end of the day, you have that kind of schemes that shows that in the sea. Uh, you have so many interaction and so many activities going on, and as uh, you have to really to um, take all this together to make sure that an activity is not having a bad uh, impact on other activities, and all together that they are not uh, preventing good uh, functioning of the ecosystem and uh, conservation of the ecosystem and habitats should be at the center of all marine spatial planning thinking because. Uh, the first is to conserve the ecosystem services, and then you can develop the activities. Uh, this is another example, very quickly, just <laughs> to show it, how beautiful it can be. It is a channel between uh, the UK and, and France. Uh, it's a very, very intense uh, area, but I'm sure that if uh, developing by developing in many places in the Mediterranean, but developing a marine spatial planning, you can also have that kind of scheme at the end of the day, which is quite difficult to read. Thank you very much. And I'm happy to answer all the questions. It was a bit uh, compact. And I hope I did not, it was not too long. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your uh, very enlightening presentation. Uh, your presentation touched on uh, three uh, important topics. It was very, very valuable. We appreciate all hard work and you put into sharing with us. And uh, now let's open the floor to any questions. Please uh, keep your question brief, <laughs> but I write a little bit long. Um, yes, we, we are waiting in the question, but I wrote one question. Can you uh, see or yes. I read it? Yeah. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, yes we, we had this case study in Indonesia. Um, and it's also published on our IUCN website. So if you if you just uh, Google IUCN uh, aquaculture Indonesia, you will find it, I guess, or aquaculture case study. And uh, yes, it's um, uh, the brackish water shrimp culture in Indonesia is a very damageful activity for mangrove, as you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, but still, uh, uh, there are people trying to look at it from a different perspective and to use the mangrove as an ecosystem services and not something that to eradicate and you put the pound in place of the mangrove but to use the mangrove as an ecosystem services for having um, uh, other kind of approach for the shrimp culture not destroying the mangrove but protecting by uh, protecting the mangrove and having some uh, shrimp culture so it's a matter of uh, density uh, it's a matter of the system you can put in place which are which is uh, respecting 
the uh, way the mangrove is functioning. So in uh, in uh, wetland, of course, uh, um, of course, if you think in putting some pounds and uh, with a a, a system of uh, a, a intensive, you won't, you won't, uh, 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 I mean, achieve anything good. Uh, but you have other, other, other ways of, uh, of, uh, of breeding, uh, even fish, uh, low density or extensive aquaculture, uh, really taking care of the, of the local um, climate and the local. Uh, um, conditions uh, might be something to look at in the details. That's why I would really love to do a case study in details in, in Turkey, we, in some, yeah, probably in some uh, good uh, uh, wetland that you have. Your mic. Uh, uh, just th this is a wetland, but no protected status classification and we have to check your criteria. Okay, thank you. We, um, we other colleague, uh, yeah, you can open, yeah, pardon. Um, now uh, our professor Shukru Beşiktaş, uh, wants to take floor yes okay uh hocam ses kız <gülüyor> sesiniz kızık sesi açabilir misiniz açın duymuyoruz o açamıyor sen hemen lazım hmm. Ah, şimdi teşekkürler. Şimdi tamam şimdi. Uh, thank you very much for this presentation. It was very enlightening for me because I am outside the MPA uh, studies and I am not much familiar. Although I am physical oceanographer working on the, the coastal problems, but I was not aware much about the MPAs. And you mentioned in your talk that the, in the application of MPAs in the marine areas is required the consideration of the ocean conditions, like a 3D a, a volume of the water, and uh, <coughs> it is uh, changing in time because it is uh, water moving, species in the water column changing, etc. Few years ago, I participated in the one the meeting of the European Marine Board. And there, there was a discussion uh, that the, the MPA, the term as a, a marine protected area is coming from the land. And in the marine environment, we have to call it not the a marine protected area, but marine protected volume because of its 3D nature. And then, the, and, and then they were saying that you can use the term MPA if you are considering, for example, the protecting the seagrasses or corals and etc. But if you are talking about the whole environment, it is a, the 3D and then we are talking about the, the volume. What do you think about that? Is there a real discussion in the marine protected area? Uh, uh, the working around the people in the marine protected areas or what do you think about this? marine protected volume and area uh, terminology thank you thank you for your question i i, I think it's a very uh, clear and important question uh yes you're fully right i mean we should not call that marine protected area it's just uh, uh wrong <laughs> and uh i i was part of many of those discussions that we should not use area but volume or but having said that, uh, it was uh, uh, said that by area in English, you don't uh, you don't mean really that you exclude the uh, third dimension. And uh, we could consider that by a marine protected area, we uh, uh, include the, the volume because everybody now understand that including the 3D and even four because the time is um, much more important in marine than in terrestrial. It's changing a lot more open time and it's changing on a regular basis also with tides or with with uh, with currents so uh, yes uh, the mpa is not uh, the brightest or the, the 
better the best term for, for for that for what we want to do we want to conserve the volume over time that's absolutely sure that is absolutely clear now for the sake of communication with uh, others and uh, recognizing that uh, the uh, conservation uh, uh, let's say theory or, or, or the dogma uh, is really coming from terrestrial uh, colleagues and they did a lot of work we as marine scientists also we accept <laughs> to, to use the term marine protected area but we always have in mind that it's not the right one and as i show in one of my slides taking the verticality of a, a marine area <laughs> which is very strange to say that but the verticality of a marine area is is as important as uh, is uh, horizontality thank you very much you're welcome your mic uh, yeah I think it's uh, there is a no question. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, a big thank you, um, must go to Monsieur Francois Simard, as uh, this seminar has provided much needed information on this topic. Uh, thank you, <laughs> Francois. <laughs> Merci. Thank you uh, so much, Guzel. And again, I'm I'm happy to answer other question by email you can yeah. uh, spread my email and i'm happy to answer and i hope i can um, discuss with you more and uh, develop a case study that we conduct together in turkey uh, at some point for uh, for looking at uh, the synergies and opportunities between aquaculture and mpa in turkey oh, thank you thank i you think we much. continue to work yeah. together bye. have a good day bye bye have a nice day bye bye Thank you.